If I asked you to name all of the things that you love, how long would it take to name yourself? Self-love or to love oneself has for a very long time seemed like a utopian state of mind to me. But something shifted inside of me a couple of years ago and it opened up a beautiful door to my body and soul. I learned that self-love meant respecting myself and my needs, prioritizing my happiness and being compassionate towards myself. This vlog is a small look into a big journey. My mornings are for me. They're a time where I connect to my body and I truly feel her. We often forget our bodies throughout the day, or we even get frustrated or angry with them. In my fascination with Ayurveda, I discovered Abhyanga. It's a practice that traditionally is a self-warm oil massage from head to toe. There is so much love involved with this practice as you're connecting to all parts of your body. It's said to balance your doshas and strengthening a bond to your physical form. While I'm massaging myself, I like to smile and repeat affirmations inside of my head. Look, my sweater is a naked woman. <laughs> I actually am very excited about sweater season. I love it. Today as well, the weather is extremely dark and very rainy and just super gloomy in general. And I personally have a really love-love relationship to this kind of weather. I think it's so cozy and magical. But I know a lot of people, especially people who are not used to living in countries where it's very dark in the winters and you're literally forced to like it unless then you become very unhappy. Winter depression is a serious thing. Jake, my boyfriend, is one of these people who really hate when the weather is like this. And I've been really trying to teach him about the wonders of this weather and what it can do and what it can bring you. Let me tell you what I did this morning because if you are a person like Jake, this might help you to change some of your habits that will make you feel better during this kind of weather. In the morning, I turned off his alarm and I woke him up gently by myself with a couple of kisses. <laughs> um, then I made him a warm cup of coffee and I made sure that this lighting that I have on, the very bright white lighting, was not on. I made sure to turn on all of these cozy lights like that one that's more orange. It does give the soul a kind of calming effect rather than this kind of light. And then furthermore, when he went into his online meeting this morning in the office, right in this room behind us, I made sure to again turn on the cozy lights but also put on a couple of um, a couple of candles around him with a nice calming scent and I just made sure to like comfort him and give him lots of kisses and kind of like give the mood of like a snuggle mood and seriously I have never seen Jake wake up this comfortable when it's this kind of weather outside so I hope this helps <laughs> now it's time for our breakfast so let's cook There are so many videos online and so many Instagram posts, so many blog posts about self-love that shows taking a bubble bath or putting on a face mask, etc. And those are totally great, but in my head, but the act of doing something loving towards yourself and then inside of yourself, 
loving yourself are connected yet very different. You can take a million bubble baths, but that still probably will not change how you feel about yourself if you are in a bad state. That is so important to notice when you are on a self-love journey because it is a lot more difficult than just starting your water running for a bath, you know? So if I should give an example about how I have, you know, started the journey of inner true self-love, I would say it's a lot about getting to know yourself inside and knowing how to set boundaries. I definitely think that being able to set boundaries both for yourself but also for people around you is like a true form of self-love because it is a protection of your energy. Also something like I did earlier this morning was like affirmations while I was touching my body. Affirmations is also another version of manifestations saying that I love my arms, I love my strong thighs, I love my hair. Keep saying these things a lot and repeating it over and over in your head. It's, it's like a manifestation because your mind will be so wired in this way of thinking and in this way of speaking to yourself that it will start to believe it. That's why manifestation is not some hocus pocus hippie stuff. <laughs> Manifestation is so real. It's the same thing as, you know, let's say we're thinking about yellow cars, right? Suddenly, when you go out to the street, you will notice all of the yellow cars. And the amount of yellow cars hasn't changed. They were there before as well, but you just didn't notice them. And that's the same thing with manifestation. Your mind is going to be so wired into a certain way of living or a certain way of thinking that you will unconsciously start to actually be this and believe it. I think it's magical. I mean, the brain is magical. <laughs> so throughout this vlog, I will obviously also be running a bubble bath and I will also put on a face mask, but we have to remember that these are tools. They are not things that will change the way we feel about ourselves, but they might make it become easier to actually connect deeper with ourselves. When you feel like you're taking care of yourself and your body, that is an act of love. And if we do that a lot, that might change the way that we think about ourselves and how much we love ourselves as well. So it's not something to ignore, but it's also very important to realize that it is not everything. <laughs> I hope that made sense. Actually, speaking about doing something for your body, I was seriously looking forward to this week because I promised myself I would go get a massage I have been feeling so stiff in my neck and in my back and yeah, I kind of want to treat myself a little bit. But first and foremost, I have actually bought a Christmas tree because tomorrow is December 1st and I want to make it a bit Christmassy here at home. I still don't know if I'm going to be able to go to Denmark this Christmas because the Corona cases in Europe in general is just getting out of control and there's no way I would want to be trapped in Denmark if I catch Corona. Let's make it a bit Christmassy here at home and surprise Jake when he's home as well. I had to turn off that light. It made me go crazy inside. <laughs> Okay, this is the Christmas tree that I ordered. Um, you could actually order one with that was like 180 tall, but I thought that was a bit of an overkill. Ooh, here we have the top. I certainly hope there's a way to make this a little bit more compact because this looks horrible. What the hell? <laughs> Look at this. Look at the compactness of the Christmas tree. And then look at this Christmas tree. What the hell? <laughs> look, it's so airy. What the hell? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh my 
God, I love Christmas. Okay, let's find a place it can stand. Okay. It looks a lot better now. I'm really happy. <laughs> it up because I was listening to Christmas music and I missed my family. Ah, oh, it looks adorable. I can't wait for Jake to see this. <laughs> I got into my sweatpants because I'm heading off to my massage. It's starting in 20 minutes time. <gasps> Let's go! I'm so excited and I'm so happy to treat myself finally. Haven't done that for a while. Here we go. Happy December 1st and officially Merry Christmas. So this morning I was reading a little bit about like living intentionally and I realized that like for me personally I have for a very long time like fallen into a routine in my life where I just you know I work, I cook, I clean, I see my friends and then I go to bed and I repeat. Losing intention in your daily life and in your daily habits makes it harder for you to connect to yourself and to bring your inner you out into your actions and into what you are projecting to the world. This specifically, I feel like is definitely contributing to the fact that I feel like there's a part of me missing in my daily life. Is this something that you can recognize too? Because when I first realized it, my mind was kind of blown. <laughs> So when is when is actually the last time that you sat down and did something that you really love to do? All my younger life, like literally all up until I would say maybe a couple of last years of high school, I've been the creative girl. I've always been the girl who was creative. In the youth club, I was always sitting in like the little room where you can paint and draw and make stuff with your hands like i've always been that person i actually used to draw quite a bit as well and i was really good at it i do not remember the last time i've done something creative like that other than decorating a house and such but that's creative in in a way that's also a task i need to i need to get my hands down in that again because that connects to a part of me that's not a part of a greater good it's just a part of who i am inside and what i truly love to do inside so i've made the decision i want to go to dongdaemun because in dongdaemun here in seoul they have like a whole ass building filled with like lots of crafty stuff that you can go and get so i definitely want to do that but first today i am heading out because i'm seeing stephanie and uh, i asked her if she could teach me how to make like I don't really know what it's called. It, I think in English it's called mold wine, but it's a very, very European thing, right? So let's head out and um, purchase the ingredients. <laughs> it is 
is so confusing here, guys. Good girl. <laughs> oh, and then go me. It's okay. Relax. Relax. Hello, Cesar. Oh, you cutie. It's okay. Oh. Um, okay, so they didn't, when I went to the grocery shop, the, the fine ladies in 9 1, they looked at me a little bit weird coming in with my booby. Booby. The one net. down there? In 9 1, yeah. Yeah, oh. They're like, I came in with this one with the boobs on. And they were like, okay. <laughs> They were out of oranges, so they said this is the closest in taste, and I don't know what it is. A cutie! It's a cutie! And then... One... Lots of wine. Two... Three... Four... And then here is the diarrhea medicine. Cranberry juice. Isn't that what you use it for usually? It's for UTI! UTI? Yeah! yeah. Diarrhea? <laughs> Diarrheas and is UTIs. <laughs> Fantastic! Some Glühwein or in <laughs> Glühwein, isn't that true in German? I love when you speak any foreign language. Your accent is just so, it's like so good. Like, really? yeah. Ah, Glühwein. Glühwein. It's like, it sounds like perfect German. It's like so crazy to me. Okay, so first step, we need a big pot. A big ass pot because we have four or five, five liters to make. Oh, because we need something for you as well. Oh. For, we're gonna make Glühwein um, ourselves since you cannot really buy it here in Korea. Yeah. Um, step one is we're gonna caramelize a little bit of white sugar and brown sugar Ooh. in this pot and then uh, don't let it burn. It, like mm. I ruined so many times for it because it melts so quickly. That's right, yeah. yeah. I feel like I should be standing on like a stool. No, I feel like I should go down you know, like this. Every time I see you, I'm always like, damn, Cecil's tall. Every I, time. <laughs> when I set the camera up for you as well, I walked over here and I was like, damn, where's my forehead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so car caramelize the sugar and then we're going to put just a little bit of red wine in it to kind of, uh, it's going to get like really hard. Yeah. So just like a little bit and then you just mm -hmm. like, literally just start dumping everything oh, in. everything in. The wine, we have cranberry juice, but you can also use like cherry juice, mm -hmm. any kind of red juice, mm -hmm. I guess. And then we're gonna put cinnamon sticks, we're gonna cut up some orange cloves, and then I like to put in like a little bit of rum to give it like a little yes. bit extra. I love that too. a perfectionist at times or well, actually I try to be always a perfectionist yeah. but I realized this actually a almost like a mechanism a shield to protect myself so I guess self-love in the sense of I've been trying to like figure myself out more and also yeah. like being okay also with not being perfect and having like flaws and having like mistakes and mm -hmm. that's also fine because it feels like perfectionism, I guess that's like a shield. Yeah. So, because I'm like, if I do everything perfect, no one can criti criticize me. Exactly. And, but that's also like a very... High standards to put yourself to. Yeah, and like double-sided sword, isn't that yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. it's like... It has this bad side too, because I'll do it till I'm like exhausted trying mm -hmm. to do like something perfect, and then when it's not perfect, I just like beat myself up. Yeah. So I've been really trying to just be alright with if shit is not perfect, if the house is not like thousand percent clean, mm. it's like all good. No one's gonna die. And you you like find the best tools tool for that to help you is like researching and like reading about it? Yeah. Mm. I have been reading actually there's a book I want to give you. Ooh 
and it's like it's called the gift of imperfection. <gasps> I love that. Okay, one, two, three. Ooh. Oh my god. How much should we do? Um, more than you think. <laughs> One shot. Let's have a little taste. Mm. Look at those rosy cheeks. Super lecker. Super lecker. Super lecker. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Today, I'm going to record the podcast with Sile and the topic is really interesting today because it's so connected to our current feelings. Sile has not been feeling very well and I had like, I would say just like one or two days like that as well. And that's why we didn't record podcast last week. And we realized it would be so helpful and so like both to us and to everyone listening that we actually film or like record an episode about having bad days. So I'm really excited to do that today. Siri is arriving in like 20 minutes time, I think. Having bad days is so normal, guys. I have so many things to share about having bad days. And actually the episode that we're recording today is up at the same time as this video. So after you finish watching this, I super recommend you to go and have a listen to that podcast because it will give you an insight in having bad days. And we will give some tips and talking about how we can practice self-compassion more because the reason why we're so like a lot of us feel so guilty because when we have bad days or when we're not perfect, it's because we lack self-compassion. And you know, in the age of social media, we're just so colored by this whole idea that other people live perfect lives or successful people live perfect lives. They don't have bad days. It's like, a, it's not true. So practicing self-compassion is so important. So there will be a lot of insights in that episode. It is so tightly connected to self-love as well. So I really recommend you to have a look at After Sunset. You can find us on Spotify, which is just After Sunset, or you can find us on um, Anchor, and you can find us on Apple Podcasts. Yay! <laughs> I'm really excited to see Sile. I just really want to give her a huge hug, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there one specific thing? There's a lot of things I know, but what is the one specific thing uh, where you feel like you like is showing love to yourself or things that it has changed the way that you love yourself? Can you share something? I think the main thing for me is the way that I, the relationship I have to myself in my head, mm -hmm. the way that I talk to myself, and like really making a habit and noticing the way that I approach myself and compliment myself and also I don't know I just feel like I always have someone with me mm. when I have good times or less good times and then recognizing that there is like almost two parts of me the one having this human experience that absolutely has no idea what she's doing and then there's like like kind of the higher version of me that knows that everything is that, that it, how it's supposed to be and kind of finding comfort in those two mm. feel like I'm never alone and I really like that Aww. Oh, I love that I think it's healthy to like very healthy doing stuff for yourself by yourself exactly. sometimes yeah. we're so dependent on being with other people sometimes I think I think so 
Self-love is a state of mind, and it's not something neither of us can lock down as an achievement. It's constant effort and constant change, but you're also evolving every day. That's the beauty of it. Talk lovingly to yourself and do lovingly things for yourself, and you're already on the journey. I'll see you next week.